Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to use celery. Not this type uh, of celery though, but uh, this celery for Python, which we will use today. And uh, the question you might ask me is what is celery and why should you use this celery thing in the first place? I've asked my uh, dear friend um, Perplexity, perplexity.ai, to uh, define what uh, celery is used for in a Python script in layman's terms, so in very simple terms. As you can see, the important part to remember is that it is used in Python scripts to handle tasks asynchronously, meaning that it allows certain parts of a program to run independently in the background, in the background is the important part, without slowing down the main program. And I will open my IDE to uh, show you the readme file of the repo which I will share on GitHub so you will be able to get this full repo including the explanations and uh, clone it to use it and adapt it at your end. And as you can see this is the type of problem that you can run into if you run a time consuming function in a Python script. You can get a worker timeout so your script will break, it will stop working and sometimes you, if you haven't implemented uh, proper error uh, handling, your users won't see why this happened in the first place. That's why you should use Celery, but it's not that easy uh, to implement, I would say. And there are a few details also if you are on a Windows PC to connect to uh, a remote uh, Redis database as a message broker for your uh, Celery uh, setup. So I will explain all of that in this demo and you will get this uh, GitHub repo. So that way you will be able to configure Celery at your end very easily. So what is the structure first of our project here in Python? So we have a main.py file with the basic setup for uh, this uh, Python script. We have the route here for the main page, index.html. We will open this uh, in a moment. Then we have an API route. This is where it will start. Uh, we will call this API world route and it will uh, start a task in another file called API world. We will also have another route to check the status of uh, the task here. And uh, when it will be uh, successful, it will uh, return a success message and we will use this to display a success pop-up on our index.html page. We have a task.py file. This is where you find the task. So it's a very simple task for the demo. It's just something that takes 10 seconds to, to run to show something that requires some time to be uh, processed. Like for instance, an API call uh, to uh, OpenAI or an API call to Stable Diffusion or some type of uh, file processing you would put this in your uh, celery tasks and you call the task from uh, the main.py file this way. The dot delay part is important. Why? Because it shows you that this task will run in the background. You will get a task ID straight away uh, from, uh, from Redis and you will call another route to check the status of the task. So it will be first a pending, 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 and then success, and you will show the success message or you will return the content to the front end, etc. So we have an index.html page right here. And uh, as you can see, I just have a button on this page. We will press the button to test the celery uh, task. And I have here a status diff where we will show uh, the status evolution uh, of the of the Celery uh, task. And uh, the most important part here is the script.js file. So what does it do? Uh, when we press on uh, the trigger button, it will call API world. So it will call this API world route that we have here in the main.py file. And then straight away after getting the task ID, it will call this other route, check task, and it will get the results uh, of the status. So it will get uh, pending, pending, pending until success. And when we get success, we use uh, sweet alert two, which is pretty nice, uh, to show this confirmation. Good job, the task has been completed. 
how do you uh, start this whole thing? So the first part is to start uh, the Flask web app. So we go to main.py. So let's start here main.py and we will open here the page. As you can see, it's very simple. Just test celery task and trigger the test task. But before we trigger the test task, we have to uh, start to spin the celery worker. So let's get back to uh, Visual Studio and let's open the readme file because I've got all the explanations there. I'm on a Windows computer. So uh, the suggestion I give you is to start this in pool uh, solo mode. Otherwise, you will get this type of error. Uh, I won't go into the details of the error, but uh, that's typically the error you will get in your Redis logs if you don't use this specific uh, command. If you use, for instance, uh, this other command, which I uh, recommend for Mac. So on a Windows PC, use this one. And if you still run into another type of error, uh, like, uh, like this one here, that um, the task uh, doesn't seem to be registered, even if you got the confirmation that it was registered, then you may try another approach like this one. And I will show you in a moment how this is configured in uh, the celery underscore config.py file. So let's take this one here and uh, we will open another uh, terminal tab, paste it, click on enter. As you can see, it will uh, start uh, the celery worker. You've got to wait until the end, until you get the final confirmation. It's ready, as you can see here, and that's my PC. You can also see here that the task API world was registered, which is important. You've got to get the confirmation that the task was registered to use it. So now we have um, the app running. We've got the celery worker running, so we can open uh, the demo page and I can click on trigger test task and you will see what happens. So we've got a status pending. If I go back here uh, to um, my Python, you can see also that I've got the logs of all the statuses pending. We go back to the page and uh, it completed and I got this pop-up, the task has been completed. If I click on OK, I can see that my latest status was success. So let's come back to Python and you see here you've got pending, 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 pending for uh, a few um, for a few times and then you've got success and when it's successful, it uh, tells my client that I can show this pop-up for uh, the successful task. So that, that's basically it. So at the moment, obviously there's nothing special in this uh, task. It's just a task which confirmed that it was uh, completed after 10 seconds. But you can imagine that you can have a very complex uh, logic in this function API world. Here is just some lines for uh, the debugging. Uh, you don't have to uh, insert those lines in uh, the production version of your app. I told you about this celery underscore config dot py file and this is the very important part of this uh, setup. So you will define here uh, the message broker of your uh, celery configuration. We are using Redis. Uh, I've declared my Redis credentials in this .env uh, file. I won't show you uh, the content of the file because it contains also the password uh, for uh, this uh, Redis URL. I got this Redis URL uh, from uh, my uh, railway setup. So if I open the browser and if I go in railway, so this is railway.app. This is one of my apps, uh, the Showmaker. And as you can see, I've got a Redis uh, configuration there, a Redis database. And in the variable, I can copy the URL of my uh, Redis uh, database and I can uh, paste it into uh, my .env file uh, to uh, use it uh, remotely from uh, my local environment. But if you do this, so if you're testing uh, the connection to Redis from your local development environment, I would strongly suggest to use this uh, queues equals cloud underscore queue approach, which means that you have to explicitly define the queues in your uh, config file. 
It's important, otherwise you will probably run into this error, which tells you that the task was not registered, even, even if you see uh, when you uh, start the worker that the task is registered here. So even if you see that, you might run into the error that you see here in my uh, readme file, so not registered. And to avoid that, you've got to explicitly uh, declare the queue that you will use for your task. So let's come back to uh, this file for the other details. This one uh, is a nice one for, I would say, housekeeping purposes. Uh, it will delete uh, the task on Redis after 60 seconds after it completed. That way you don't have all those uh, often pending tasks on uh, Redis. So it's just for housekeeping purposes here. And uh, this line uh, will try to auto discover the tasks that are present in uh, the tasks.py file. That's also very important. So very important line to connect to uh, Redis, to auto discover the tasks, to here uh, declare those explicit uh, queuing routes. And uh, here you've got this uh, housekeeping part uh, to delete the task after 60 seconds. And also, as you can see, uh, you would import your tasks.py uh, module into this configuration after declaring the settings of uh, your uh, Celery app. Here is just uh, something that uh, I have added to confirm that uh, my connection to Redis was successful. You don't need that in production, but for the demo, uh, it just uh, displayed that uh, the connection was successful. So to sum it up, you've got your main.py file with uh, your route uh, to render index.html with uh, the uh, API route to uh, call uh, the API world task. Important this delay part, uh, which will give you the task ID and then you follow the evolution of the task by uh, calling via your JavaScript, uh, this other route in Flask, which will return success in the end uh, which will uh, enable you to show something uh, on your uh, front end. And uh, this was the script uh, that was connected to my index.html page with the fetching of uh, the API route and straight away after that, fetching a check underscore task with the task ID until we get success. So I hope that everything was clear. I tried to uh, keep it short. If you have any questions about this setup, just ask me. I've spent quite a lot of time playing with uh, Celery and Redis to make it work both uh, on railway and uh, locally, uh, calling remotely um, the, the Redis uh, database uh, from my local environment. There were also some tricks uh, required to make it work uh, on Windows. So I think it's uh, pretty useful to, to all of you and all the details uh, as I showed you are in the readme file and I will share the link to uh, the github repo in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you're interested in this type of tutorial, uh, feel free to subscribe to this channel. And I also have a newsletter where I explain uh, all my journey in AI assisted coding. Uh, you can join it at AIcodingclub.com, AIcodingclub.com.